Hi everyone, I'm glad you're here with me once again. Today is what they call the unofficial first day of spring, Memorial Day, a day to remember and honor those that have served our country and defended our constitutional rights and protecting the rights of others in other countries. I want to give a shout out to my uncle. He was um, on a U-2 spy plane in a Navy ship during the Cuban crisis. Thank you very much for your time served. Two large earthquakes I want to report on today. The first one being a 6.1 um, off the coast of Honshu, Japan. 186 people said they felt this earthquake. USGS gave an intensity level of 5. It was felt across the country. And there was a few videos online showing the shaking. Japan was one of the countries fought, we fought against during the Second World War coming to the aid of China. And now China is an enemy of our country. But intensity level five means it was felt by most people, some breakage of dishes, windows, and plaster disturbance of tall objects. This earthquake was about 28 miles deep. And Japan's been having a lot of earthquakes lately. I've been covering uh, the earthquakes that have been happening on the west coast up over here yeah and interestingly about a month before this 6.5 um, earthquake occurred it might have been as low as a 6.2 um, an oarfish was caught in this area many legends believe that an oarfish is a sign of um, possibly something bad coming uh, most likely an earthquake uh, they have a lot of nuclear power plants Trying to bring this out. Yeah, I need to get a new mouse. Um, they have not reported any damage to any of the nuclear power plants because of the recent earthquakes. This was a thrust earthquake here. You can see how the fault moved during the time of that earthquake. Yep, yeah, right there. And a few of the reports on EMSC here, it says it was a rolling motion earthquake. Then we have another one says the sway was large and long someone must have been at disney at the time of the earthquake yeah there's a disney there in japan it said there was light shaking another one said there was uh, 40 to 60 seconds light shaking of the building another report says that the earthquake was felt in tokyo slight rocking motion but not a long but not long enough what they wanted it longer lasted about 40 seconds another one at an airport swaying fixtures and fish tank another report from tokyo just saying that they felt it um here's one from kawasaki japan it says the hotel across the river from india probably pronouncing that wrong another one in tokyo japan which is 70 kilometers west which is about 43 miles said it lasted about 10 seconds there at the Tokyo International Forum. Um, they did stop the trains evidently, um, but doesn't appear like anything really serious. Yeah, their um, earthquake alert system broadcasted um, over the uh, speakers loud system, both in English and in Japanese before the earthquake started shaking warning people that there was a large earthquake coming. In Shinagawa, said there was three mi minutes of steady shaking. Another one said they felt the shaking in their hotel over a minute and, or two. Now that was 72 kilometers west. So that would be about 44 miles. So for the last month, USGS is showing 49, no, excuse me, 48 earthquakes on this map. And then for on the last day we only got the one and then for the last week there's been six all right let's go to tonga this was a magnitude 6.0 and it was also a thrust earthquake let's go to the moment tensor ball and there's the 
movement of the plate. This was a very deep earthquake because of subduction. Um, it would have been about 139 miles in depth. They gave it an intensity level of 4, which means it would have been felt indoors by many, outdoors by a few. At night, some may have been woken up. Dishes, windows, doors would have been rattling. Automobiles rock noticeably, but they don't have anyone that said they felt it. Going to Google Earth, here's the location of that 6.0. Yeah, you can see how the Tonga Trench goes down and then it comes back up, creating different little islands along here. What we have is the Pacific Plate subducting underneath the Australian Indo-Asian um, Plate. This is another area that lately has been pretty active. Here we got, what is it, a 7.3. When did that occur? Um, on the 24th of this month. And then we got a 7.0. Um, that was February 16th of this year. And then we got a whole bunch of small ones over here. Here we have an image of what's going on under the ground. You can see the Pacific Plate subducting. And then we got the uh, heat and the water and everything else um, rising up and causing these um, volcanic islands that I was talking about. And then we got the uh, Australian plate. Actually, let's see. Let me check this. Yeah, this was last month. This was April 24th, the 7.3. And then the 7.0 was March 16th. I, I said the wrong month for the 7.3 and yeah it's not far from the Honga Tonga eruption it's my opinion that all the water that was put up into our um, athenosphere I'm probably pronouncing that wrong um, yeah that's created a lot of changes for our weather here on earth in fact I shared on Twitter how the uh, Tonga volcano eruption actually created a super plasma bubble in the atmosphere and that disrupt disrupted GPS signals and I'll give you a link to that article. They mapped that plasma bubble over northern Australia and it disrupted GPS uh, as far south as Townsville for about five hours. We're just getting little bits of information about that eruption and yeah, a little bit at a time. Don't want to panic people. But right there's that 6.0 that happened today. So once again, I want to say thank you to all our veterans and their families. Have a very safe Memorial Day. And if it wasn't for the veterans, you guys would not have a three-day vacation. Thank you very much for watching. Thank you for subscribing. Please like, share, and subscribe. And I'll talk to you later. God bless you. Bye. Oh,